If you're driving for something like Uber or Lyft or Postmates or anything else in the gig economy, then you need to keep your books. Otherwise, at the end of the year, you might end up in a lot of trouble. And overall, it's just good to know where you are. My name is Christian Perea, and I'm a writer at the rideshareguy.com. I'm also a driver of four years with 5,600 rides. Uh, today, I'm gonna show you how to get set up with QuickBooks Self-Employed, so that way you can set rules and track your miles and kind of keep everything in just one place. Uh, and my goal is at the end of this 13, 14 minute video, you'll be 80% done and the rest you can figure out on your own pretty easily. So um, if you haven't signed up for a tr free trial of QuickBooks Self-Employed yet, we've got a 30 day free trial right here in this little bumper that I'm gonna tell the editor to add. And uh, you know, let's get started, let's go. So when you first log into your QuickBooks Self-Employed account, the very first thing you're gonna wanna do is sync your bank accounts to QuickBooks Self-Employed. I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. You're just gonna come right up here it's gonna say your name next to this gear. You're just gonna click on that. You go into bank accounts. It's gonna go and load up all the banks you can sync for QuickBooks Self-Employed. Now, I recommend just using the bank accounts that you use for rideshare, like Uber, Lyft, uh, Postmates, what have you. And if you wanna make it even easier uh, on yourself, uh, then you can use a separate bank account that you only do your Uber, Lyft's kind of related transactions out of. So yeah, they have most, banks in here and it's usually pretty easy to just get this set up. Uh, it'll go through, it'll ask you your security questions. It's going to sync it by going into your bank account online and pulling that transaction data for the last 90 days. And from there, you'll be able to categorize it as business or personal and start, you know, get started with setting things up. If you've been driving for longer than 90 days, then you're going to click on the gear again and you're going to come into this thing called imports under transactions. and you can go to your bank and get a CSV file or an Excel spreadsheet of your transactions as far back as you need to go since you've been driving. And you can just come here and click import transactions like so. And then uh, I've already got a file on my drive here we're gonna use. It's gonna be called sample driver data. It's just uh, from an old thing I worked on in the past. And you'll see it'll pull up all the sample stuff and then you just hit continue and boom. It just imports it right there. I'm going to go over to this transactions tab and we're going to start getting stuff set up. So first sort of business, um, I'm sure everyone wants to see how much money they've made this year. So we'll do that first. Let's see, let's see how much money we've made with, with Uber. So I'm going to go into the transactions list. I see there's Uber 1022 17 is last time I got a deposit in there. That's obviously a business income transaction. So under the category, we go business, uh, business income and then you know I know every time I've gotten income from uber that it's business income right like uber doesn't just give me money for fun although I wish they would uber you should give me money for fun anyways um, I know it's a business transaction and I know it's business income so I'm gonna apply it to all of my previous transactions to where when uber deposited money in my account it's business income uh, hit save. You'll notice that QuickBooks Self-Employed tells you it's automatically categorized 39 transactions. So it went back in time, categorized it for you. Uh, and then now whenever uh, you get new income, uh, on your, since your bank account synced, it'll, that rule will automatically handle it for you. So I'm going to speed up the video here. I'm going to just do all my income real fast for Lyft, uh, Sidecar, all that fun stuff. Now I've got everything set up for my business income. I've categorized my Lyft and my sidecar on all my Uber income transactions. And we see at the end of the year, I ended up making, well, so far this year, I've made $34,057 uh, minus 207 just for gas expenses here. Uh, notice when you categorize something as business, it automatically changes these numbers here. So I'm gonna go over some quick, uh, like most common uh, expenses. And it's really important to categorize all of your expenses, not just because you want to see, you know, how much it's costing to, to, um, you know, run your business as a driver, but, but also so that way they get recorded, you know, potentially as deductions and that lowers how much you have to pay as taxes at the end of the year or the quarter, however you go about it. You also notice that, um, since I added up all my income, so you're going to see this new number up here, which is $2,481. And that's how much QuickBooks Self-Employed estimates you will owe 
for quarterly taxes due on January 16th if you don't take any deductions. So uh, our big goal here, we're going to get all this uh, expenses and deductions recorded. And our goal is going to be to make this number as small as legally possible. So that way we, uh, you know, keep keep as much as the, of the 34057 or whatever it ends up being after we do our expenses as possible. So um, I'm just going to show you here I do we have car wash, right? So I always get my car wash usually at like the same place because uh, they do a good job and I'm lazy. And so you'll see here like it, uh, QuickBooks self-employed that it just knew it was wash and road services. A lot of times it'll just know um, from previous merchant examples, but if it gets it wrong, you just click here and you can search it up. And you know, there's a ton of categories that you can just put this under. I, I'd say out of all of the services, QuickBooks self-employed definitely has like the most categories that you can put in for your expenses and thus, you know, later down the road, business deductions. Um, and, you know, same thing for like, you know, maintenance, right? Like AutoZone or, or if you get a hole in your tire, I always get holes in my tires, you know, that goes as vehicle repairs. So um, let's talk about some a little bit more complicated car payments. So depending on how you get your car, this is going to be different. But if you do like Lyft's Express Drive, for example, that'll end up being, I mean, it's still business expense, but the category is going to be I think it's rent and lease. Let me see here. Rent and lease, uh, or it could be vehicle lease. Anyways, rent and lease would be for like express drive, right? Uh, but if you, let's say you got an auto loan, um, so auto or vehicle loan. Let's see, there's vehicle loan, and then somewhere in here there's vehicle loan interest. There it is, right? It's actually a top one. So for a car payment, I like to um, go into my car payment statement for who, like car fax every month, and I'll actually split split this transaction. And what that means is like part of it's gonna be categorized as a vehicle loan, but then, um, here, let's see how I split this, right? You just split it right there. So, but like, you know, the rest of the, a certain portion of what I pay every month for my car payment is also vehicle uh, loan interest. And that's important to, to differentiate for, so I'll just show you how to do that here. You can have part of it as vehicle loan. That's like your, your principal on your car loan. And then the other part could just be a uh, vehicle loan interest. Boom. And then, you know, this is the amount is, so we'll, you know, let's say the principal for this $397 payment, uh, you know, I ended up paying uh, $300 of that was towards the principal and the remainder was towards interest. And that'll automatically like, you know, split it. Now you could choose to always split it, but you know, obviously with a loan of the way that it's uh, amortizing uh, that interest component and principal po component will change every month. So just remember, uh, if you really want to be like super detailed, just to check it every month, this is kind of something you have to do more manually. Uh, so I'm going to put it here and it'll split it like so into two different categories. Okay. So, uh, I've gone through and I've categorized everything. I've set rules for a lot of it and then um, you know, I've figured out what was personal spending and got rid of it just so that way it's not factored in. And you know, the final numbers are, you know, brought in in the last 10 months, 34,264 in business income between Uber, Lyft and Sidecar. Uh, rest in peace. I know Sidecar is not in business anymore, but just bear with me here. Um, and then we've spent $14,581 between car payments and gas and Spotify and you know, maintenance and stuff. This number is probably a little bit higher than than would be realistic, but um, you can see, you know, though, like how by setting these rules, you end up being able to, you know, really make a lot of this like accounting uh, stuff just go a lot faster because, you know, 
a lot of the, we, we shop and we get supplies and gas and, and insurance and like a lot of these transactions are just really kind of predictable you know we're creatures of habit and and you know if when you set the rules uh for the these sort of transactions you know quickbooks self-employed picks it up when it happens right on your bank so you know when as soon as you swipe the card it goes pending and then syncs with quickbooks self-employed and it files it away all right so now that we have our transactions sorted out we're going to go to figure out our miles and you just click on the miles tab here and you can either choose to add your trip manually or uh, you can track them automatically uh, via the QuickBooks Self-Employed app. And in fact, on the Q uh, QuickBooks Self-Employed app, you can not only track the miles, but you can sort your expenses, mark things as personal or business, and, and do 90% like of what you do through the web app that I'm showing you right now. Uh, but for real quick, I'm gonna show you how to add a trip manually if you prefer to do it that way, or if you wanna, you know, bring stuff up. In fact, if you uh, use like something like Mile IQ, you can import your Mile IQ trips uh, and then you can edit any details about your vehicle here, which uh, is important for like odometer readings. Uh, but this is where you would enter it. And then now I'm going to show you what uh, the miles look like on the app as you sort through them. All right. So now that we've downloaded the QuickBooks self-employed app, we're going to open it up. And after you've logged in and set everything up, you're just going to click on the settings tab and then come down to mileage and then it'll load up your automatic mileage tracking portion of the app. Now you can toggle on or off whether or not you want QuickBooks self-employed to automatically track your mileage every time you start driving. I have mine set to start tracking. And then if I wanna categorize a trip for business as a driver, um, I can do that by clicking on a trip like I did just a minute ago. And then I can categorize it as business and then when you do that, it's going to ask you to take some notes. And you just, for me, I select it as rideshare driving. It saves it, and then it's automatically recorded and categorized as a trip for, for business purposes. So after you get all your miles sorted, you'll see that like this number's come down a lot. Um, you know, 41,026 miles for a year is, is pretty reasonable. In fact, I'd say that's actually a low amount of miles for uh, you know, people who drive in like large areas like Los Angeles. Setting it up is honestly the, the most time intensive part, uh, maybe aside from actually getting your taxes to, filed. Uh, but, you know, once it's done, it's, it's just, uh, you know, I spend maybe 30 minutes a week doing this. Uh, and that's like a high estimate. Uh, if you made it this far, thanks for sticking around. Um, hopefully I helped you get set up. Uh, importing the bank accounts and you know categorizing things and all that fun stuff um and yeah if you have any questions ask them in the comment section below i'll be in there popping in answering questions and then you know make sure to like comment subscribe uh and all that fun stuff but until the next video uh drive safe and be profitable